Boy, that camera's cross my jaws just in case they don't trust me. MC Hammer can't touch me, a freestyle is disgusting. Make them mad, cut it like eggs in the two cans MJ. Drop them bombs like the dawn, set it off for a long. Might pull up and move on, then the drop kid is swung. Might swing through your palm with the one. Cart fishing on the fly. My new addiction. Oh my god, you wanna try this? For the cameras cross my jaws just in case they don't trust me. MC Hammer can't touch me, a freestyle is disgusting. Okay, so what have I got? I've got a Diamondback Mika fiberglass, eight foot six, six weight, and Diamondback Flex seven eight composite drag flywheel. I've got a Sunray Flyfish short head, six weight fly line on. I've got about seven to nine foot of Sunray bicolored tapered knotless leader, and on the end of that, I've got about two to three foot of very thin, clear six pound fluorocarbon on the end of that I've got one floating deer hair fly okay it represents a dog biscuit what dog biscuits do I use yum yum woof woof check these out just dog biscuits go to the shop buy some dog biscuits trick number one don't buy just one bag of dog biscuits buy two or three all different shapes and colors why when you mix them up like this, it means that the carp can't get locked in to one pattern of one shape and one size because then your deer hair fly will stand out. You come into a coarse fishery, check the rules. Barbless hooks, can you fish a floating bait? Do they allow fly fishing? When do they want you to come? You know, the lake's full. Do they want to fly fish them in there? Speak to the owner. You need, absolutely have to have one of these strange contraptions. It's a unhooking mat. Yes, these little carp, they need lots of babying and things like that. You've got to put them underneath your bed when you unhook them. And you must have a very nice soft net. That's about it, okay? So, I'm gonna go there. I'll need a catapult to feed the dog biscuits. Do not use your hand for throwing them in. After a day of doing that, your arm will feel like it's dropping off. I'm gonna feed, 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 get the carp coming up, and then just flick the dog biscuit in. Okay, it sounds easy, and it is to a certain extent, but they can be very, very, very picky, these carp. So you have to get the presentation just right, you have to get the timing right, you have to get the feeding pattern and the speed and the rhythm right, and the joy of joys. Getting them in on a fiberglass rod, these carp fight like mental broth. They is well bad broth, and they will rip you to bits in it. Check it out. <laughs> About these reels is that you see the low startup inertia, how smooth they are. See that? When they go on the jaggy run, the reel doesn't look dick 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 dick. It's nice and smooth. Like that, see? On this fiberglass Mika rod, I can play this big fish on a light tippet. See that? See how smooth it is? I love these wheels. Now this is a six weight fiberglass rod. You know it's about getting it's having it's about having fun, but not overplaying the fish. It's eight foot six, six weight, perfect balance for me. Jag, jag, jaggy play there. The tip took all the impact, not the tippet, not the hook hold. 
That's why I use glass on these fish. Trim the deer hair down to give it a lower profile in the water. Just a small mirror, you know, but a great fight on this Miko 8 foot 6 6 weight fiberglass rod. Just a great fight. The bend on that rope. The joy of fiberglass. Who said fiberglass is weak? It bends. I know it does that. It doesn't mean it's weak. See that butt section there? That's relatively straight. A lot of power in these makers. A lot of power in this section. The well designed balanced tapers. What do I mean by a balanced taper? I mean there's no hinge points around its, its parabolic curve. And that's not the material, that's the design of the taper. They're designed by somebody who really knows what they're doing. They understand the material and they understand a balanced taper. How do you tell if a rod is balanced? Well, in a snap test, it will break just above the handle here. The rod, as it bends and bends and bends, if there are any hinge points, it'll break at the hinge point. Well, the only hinge point in a balanced rod is just above the handle. Right now, this carp is bending it all the way to there, which means there's still power in this section, in this eight foot six, six weight. But all this, all the top two thirds, that's mostly being shock absorption at the moment. There's weeds here, there's a great big sort of pipe going out to an aerator, and I'm able to steer this big ghost carp out of those weeds. And it's almost ready for net netting. That's not a long fight. Absolutely love these makers. I mean, not a huge fish. I think it's called a ghost carp. Absolutely don't know. But you know, big strong fight on that maker. Why would you want to use a 10 foot 7 weight and something like that? That was so much fun. So, just as an experiment, I've changed to a 6 foot 2 weight fiberglass maker. Fishing for double figure carp. Oh! Now this is a fight. Woo -hoo. No way, I've already pulled him underneath that pipe. Oh. Now we're talking. Oh, oh mate. You know, it's a bit of a joke really actually. I'm trying to use a two weight to catch a big carp, but actually it's a very good rod. It's a very good tool for the job. I mean the back cast. See what I mean? <laughs> because it loads so deep, so short, it actually fires out with a very short back cast a long way. 
started off with a 10 foot 7 weight, then I went to an 8 foot 6, 6, 6 weight, now I'm on a 6 foot 6, 2 weight. And to be honest, I could have started with the 2 weight from the beginning. Now that came, opened his big rubbery mouth and nailed that deer hair thing. And here we are on a two weight Mika. Fighting some sort of carp, don't know what it is. This is a real test of the Flex 7-8 reel. Because the battle's gonna be shared equally between the rod and the reel. See the way I can, I don't know if you can see that, but the fight is equally distributed between the reel and the rod. When that fish wants to go and the rod's given enough bend, the reel takes over. <laughs> Look at that rod. Yeah, he's not small. <laughs> yeah, on a two weight. <laughs> I've got to say, Diamondback, you really made two products there, which work completely beautiful. They they just work beautifully together. You don't need heavy gear. You don't even need expensive gear. That was a lot of fun.